So, there's been an update to A Clash of Kings, and we're now playing A Clash of Kings 7.1. So if you'd like to download it, there's a link in the description. And as far as I'm aware, it is save game compatible, because as you can see right here, we have our, our man Elias. He's just chilling out here. And in front of him is Brendan Storm. Oh yes, Brendan Storm is an absolutely fantastic medic. And uh, thankfully, the new version has fixed the problem without having any ransom brokers or companions and has also changed a couple of other things but anyway we are hopefully going to be able to recruit this guy and he joins for free ah now we have another quest search the tavern for maester yandel and the acolyte says i'm here to forge my chain and become grand maester say are you looking for work maester yandel said he was looking for a courier and we are here once again in Old Town, because now that we have a companion, it might make sense for us to try and do some quests to level him up, because he actually has six in surgery. Oh, Sir Felton is here as well. Hello there. Okay, you're going to be joining me too. Uh, oh, 1,500. Wow, that's actually a lot of money. I'm going to take him though. I'm going to take him, because getting as many companions as possible is probably going to be really, really useful for us at the moment. And where's... Where's the maester? Ah, uh, this is actually another companion, isn't it? How much, how much are you? Oh, he's also 1500. Ah, oh, I probably would have preferred taking him then. Oh, well, never mind. There's the maester. Yes, can I help you? He's not that old. Are you Yandel? Ah, yes, yes. I am Yandel. Who are you and how can I help you? One of the acolytes said you were looking for a courier. Ah, yes, quite, quite, I do. I have been working on a momentous tome these past years. I call it The World of Ice and Fire. Beautiful work, dedicated to King Robert, but uh, now I suppose it should be dedicated to his heir. Either way, some of the illuminators in Lannisport have been working on a copy for the king. They do great work there. Letters in gold and scarlet like you wouldn't believe. And I especially enjoy their work on sigils. It's like the Krakens are getting ready to strangle the reader. And? Ah. I need someone to pick it up and deliver it to me. They're excellent craftsmen in Lannisport, but before I have the term delivered to the king, I should like to check it for spelling errors. Wouldn't do to let the king be disappointed. And to tell you the truth, I quite enjoy looking at the pictures. Can you pick up the book? I'd do it myself, but I can't bear to be gone from the archives for so long, even though you're in the tavern at the moment. <laughs> All right, well, Lannisport is our next destination then. The Illuminated Lioness is a large building located close to the center of Lannisport, adjacent to a small fountain decorated with leaping fish, sporting the manes of a lion. The air around the shop is thick with the smell of ink, leather, and paper. And outside, scribes are busy copying testaments and documents for the wealthier citizens. Let us enter. Aha, hello there. I'm here to pick up a tome for Maester Yandel. Ah, yes, very good. The ink finished drying not three days ago. It's quite beautiful, and I'm sure the king will be pleased. We use the same scarlet as the one Lord Tywin had us use for his invitation to the wedding of the king and queen. Lannister colors, you know. That will be 500 coins for the work we've done. The Citadel has already paid for the materials. I can't afford... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I can't afford that. Now, someone did tell me. Can I not go in? I can't go into the feast. Ah, okay. Someone did tell me in the comments that there are actually chests in every single town, or in most towns, and I'm actually going to be looking around a little bit and seeing maybe if they are in the streets, because they're probably not going to be in the castle, let's face it. They, I mean, obviously there is a chest in the castle, but I would assume that hidden chests will be in the streets. So I will be looking around and trying my luck. Well, we might have a pretty significant problem on our hands. I did accept a quest from the Guildmaster. I did attempt also for quite some time to find a chest in Lannisport. Unfortunately, I could not find it. It's a pretty large town. I don't know whether that's really going to make that much difference, but maybe I was just looking, you know, looking in the wrong places. But for the most part, I did not really know where else to look. I went through all of the streets. I attempted to look on the ships, but the ships are very, very difficult to get to, so that's obviously not a thing. And, uh, well, just various other things that uh, did not really work out too well for me. So, hopefully we will be able to achieve victory against these broken men. These guys are elite 
Westerland's longbowman. So you might be thinking to yourself, oh, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe Mr. Elias has bitten off a bit more than he can chew, but it actually appears that they are pretty easy to take out. Now bear in mind, we are fighting at exactly midnight. It may not seem like it because of all the mist and everything, but this is actually nighttime. And nighttime does have a pretty significant effect on the accuracy of archers because obviously we do have the, uh, you know, weather effects accuracy option turned on for the most realism and so on and so forth, you know, however much realism that gives. And, well, this has gone pretty well actually as a result. And some of them actually did rout. But what I'm hoping for is a good amount of cash from this. If we can get a good amount of cash, we will be in a really good position because then I will finally be able to buy, quote unquote, the actual uh, the actual book. I would have liked to have captured these these guys, but unfortunately, I don't have any prisoner management at the moment. Oh my! Are you serious? Seriously, just giving us that? That is terrible. Okay, so while we are attempting to hunt down a couple of people right here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to spec into some prisoner management because even though it only gives us five prisoners, I feel like that's better than not having anything in that because if I had been able to take those elite Westerlands archers prisoner, then I probably would have been able to sell them for a pretty decent amount. And as I say, the new version 7.1 has reintroduced the companions, of course. You've seen those already and Ransom Brokers. So it is time for some more battling and we are up against, I think about 13 forest bandits. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find any additional looters for the Guild Master Quest because I actually took one that basically just tells you, hey, hunt down these looters in the nearby countryside. And I would have loved to have been able to do that, but the only group that I saw only had seven looters, and they got murdered by a nearby vassal instantly. So I was basically unable to do anything about those guys. But hopefully we'll be able to take some of these prisoner, and maybe we'll find a ransom broker or something like that to give us a little bit of extra cash. And I'm hopeful that now that I have this pretty decent weapon, I mean, it's not it's not the best, you know, we, we know it's not the best. But now that I have this weapon that is capable of taking people prisoner, I'm going to try and make the most of it and uh, try and utilize its unconscious making abilities as much as possible. Now, hopefully we're, we're actually going to get a decent amount of loot from this, just enough so that we'll be able to then, well, maybe do something with it, you know, like sell it and gain the book and maybe something like that. Oh, I could have actually sold this wine. Oh. That would have probably made diff uh, you know a bit, a bit of a difference. Ah, oh, my bad, my bad. Oh well, never mind. It's okay. Everything is going well, or is it? Because I actually just leveled up, and now I have no money left over. That's fine. That's actually okay. So let's go for a little bit extra in power strike right there, just to make sure that we can actually start killing people pretty easily. And let's go into Lannisport. There was a melee going on here as well, by the way. Oh, there is still a melee going on. And I was actually thinking of maybe participating in it. However. The problem with the melee is that it is one-on-one -on -one combat. Yes, one-on-one -on -one combat. It's going to be kind of harsh for me, especially because you have to use your own gear. And as a result, I'm probably not going to do too well. So I'm actually going to sell the Persimmon Wine because that will give me the 500 that I need to get the book. So let's go into the Illuminated Lioness once again and speak to the extortionist. I'm here to pick up a tome. <laughs> yes, there we go. Very well. Fantastic. Here we are, the finest book ever made, I'd say. I had a look through it while the apprentices worked. The craftsmanship is like nothing anyone's ever seen before. But you must give my regards to Yandel. The text is quite interesting as well. Oh, thanks very much, person. I, I wonder whether Maester Yandel is actually going to give me my money back. I've returned with the tome. Ah, very well. Yes, this is beautiful work indeed. Those apprentices know what they're about. Look at those dragons. It's almost as if you can feel the heat coming off them. Here's a little recompense for your troubles, Elias. Ah, he actually gave us double the money back. That's actually really nice of him. Thank you very much. I very much appreciate it. Wow, that was a bit, a bit touch and go there because I have a whole bunch of people that I need to level up and I don't have enough money for it. So that's pretty great. Anyway, we are now here in Old Town. There's basically nothing for me to do here. I could technically sell this now because I've, I've actually equipped a couple of my companions with some of that gear. 
Ah, so we have traveled far and wide and I have finally found a quest that we might be able to complete because I know that the tourney at nine stars is very, very difficult indeed and Beyond the Wall requires 150 renown. So we are doing the lights part one. I spoke to a woman in the tavern in Lordsport and she told me to come over to Hammerhorn Castle, which is in the Iron Islands. And I have now just spoken to this fellow called Loren, who says that we need to go to a fishing village to investigate what these strange lights are. And apparently, they are not pirates. You arrive at the fishing village, huddled amongst a few pines. It can hardly be called a village, and is mostly comprised of a few huts and a single solitary boat. Let us explore the village. All right, to discover the source of the odd lights off the coast. Well, that's, that's very interesting, because obviously way back, this is way back before they had electricity, so let's have a look. Bloody footprints lead towards the shore. They look almost human. All right. Oh, what is going on here? Someone or something put up a fight here. That is creepy. In the middle of the small village in a huge is, is a huge grotesque statue. It looks like it has been submerged in water recently. Am I going to be attacked from nowhere soon? The skeletons of the villagers are laid out in a circle. The meat has been stripped from their bones. Oh, wow. Okay, so we've definitely got some crazy stuff going on here. You've, ex you've successfully explored the... Okay, fantastic. I'm already done here then by the looks of things. And now we need to return to Lorin. I visited the village. And... It was empty. All the villagers are dead, and it looks like something killed them. Man or not, I can't say. And an old statue was placed in the middle of it all. It looked a bit like a giant toad. Ah, uh, the lights are gone now. Don't speak of this to anyone. I'll have the Lord's men burn the remnants of the village. What, 150? We're only getting 150 coins for that? Well, I suppose we didn't really do that much, and 150 coins can go pretty far this early in the game, so I suppose that's okay. Do you know of anyone who might have any tasks for me? My uncle Sir Gilbert is looking for someone to do some unknightly work. He was here a minute ago. Perhaps if you return later, you can find him. Yes, how can I help you? Do you have any tasks for me? Ah, yes, I do, I do. But you have to keep silent about this. What would you have me do? Before the old king abolished the lords right to the first knight, the Targaryens were known to visit the small folk of Dragonstone and Driftmark to take their due, and they continued to do so even after the right was abolished. The resulting offspring were known as dragon seeds. The dragon seeds used to be plenty on the islands of the gullet, but their numbers have dwindled over the years. However, recently a young man has been claiming to be the bastard son of Prince Rhaegar. Ooh. Hmm, go on. This young man, going by the name of Lacaris, or Lacaris, uh, has been meeting with some of the knights from Hull, known to be descended from the Velerons, or the Valerions, and thus being akin to the Dragon Seeds. According to one of my informers, a man named Burlo. They've been talking of sneaking into the castle and overwhelming the guard, taking the king hostage, and pro proclaim this Lazarus the true king of the Seven Kingdoms. This cannot be allowed to happen. I need you, Elias, to break up the conspirators and execute the lot of them. They meet mostly at night or when the fog rolls in from the narrow sea, obscuring the view. We don't want to cause a scene, so just kill them and leave the bodies to be found. Burlo has sent a message, detailing their next meeting, which will take place in the small village close to this very castle. Very well. I will execute these conspirators. Sir Gilbert Faring has tasked you with executing the supposed dragon seed, Lazarus Waters. You need to bring at least ten men, and that is exactly what we've done. So, as you can see right here, I have my Stormlander... Stormlander troops, and we are going to be making our way through the dense fog. It is extremely thick, and I am extremely worried, but I think I should be okay, because my weapon is actually pretty decent. You know, it's okay for dealing with these guys, and, uh, well, I think we should have a pretty decent advantage here. Or at least I hope so. Really don't want to die, though. Thank you very much. Oh, Lady Elise! Lady Elise was taken out. Okay, I'm actually unsure who's my enemy and who's the who are the friends here because my people do not have little uh, <laughs> little icons above them. But hopefully, I will be able to help out with this guy. Whoa, he he's he's got some uh, he's got some decent attack right there. Whoa, this guy's using some heavy armor. Okay, hello. 
Uh, maybe, maybe he's going to be difficult. No, never mind. Never mind. Just a rebel knight. Nothing to worry about. And maybe we can do some damage here as well. Whoa, okay. Yeah, got to be a bit careful here. Is this the fellow? This might be the guy. Yes, he is. There we are. Okay, so we murdered him in cold blood. And uh, we're now... Are we, are we done? Or... Ah, hello there. One more. One more fellow. Yes, another rebel knight. All right. Oh, hello there. Hello, Burlo. Do I need to kill him? Or do I need to speak to him? Can I... Oh, I can't speak to him. Okay. Well, whatever the case, we gained 5 renown and 10 renown, respectively, which is pretty nice. And we now have the opportunity to actually loot a whole bunch, which is actually really good. Because being able to do this early on and not have any, well, any negative side effects whatsoever is going to be super good for us. So, Gilbert, I've taken care of the conspirators. Truly? Well done, Elias. His Grace the King has given me permission to choose a suitable reward from the armory in the Stone Drum. One of the weapons was rather fascinating. Taken from a Bravosi smuggler some years ago, it appears to be one of their slender blades, but forged for two hands rather than one. I imagine it would prove a rather poor cutting weapon, but it might prove to be exceptionally lethal as a stabbing tool. And of course, a monetary reward is due. Well, thank you very much. A two-handed Bravos blade we have been given, and we've also gotten some relation with King Stannis himself, as well as 500 coins. That's actually not even that bad. I like that. And there is the two-handed Bravos blade. Wow, that is actually kind of insane for thrusting damage. Its swing is terrible, and it can't be used to block, but the thrusting damage is pretty cool. I'm actually going to try cons and, and considering using this. And uh, I think now that we have completed the Seeds of the Dragon, we are going to be ending this episode off here. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.